Is the church confused about whether or not it supports homosexuality? Confused or not? Yes. We're never confused about anything. What is we the know, position know, of the church? We know, we know, we know, eh? What is? What is the position of the church on that? On homosexuality? Clear. Homosexuality is a tendency which can lead to action. Okay? As a tendency in itself, nobody can accuse you or blame you for being what you are. But what you do, your action, can be reprehensible to a country, a state, or whatever, because it goes against its norms or its laws or whatever type of thing. So the two things that should not be mixed. I mean, if somebody wants to wear earrings or feels that this is what I am, fine, that's what you are. I can't I can, I can, I can have problem issues with you. But if you say this is what I am, therefore I'm going to do something that a particular community or society I live in, mm. take objection to, that's what it's in the case of the Christians or people of the Bible, that's where, that's where they say biblical, whatever, concerns certain acts are sinful. Should Ghana then go ahead to sign the anti gay Ghana, law? Ghana, Ghana is not all Christian. Ghana is not all Muslim. Ghana is a different, whatever. So to say you adopt this to impose a, the viewpoint of, in this case, I, I speak as a Christian, on whatever would also not be fair. Okay? If, if the Christians in Ghana, the Muslims in Ghana, or whatever, will come together and say this, we agree that this is a common thing, then, you know, then we'll have something like that. Mm. But in the absence of that, we need to recognize uh, the diversity of faiths and, uh, you know, postures of uh, uh, beliefs that people have. I see. So then, you know, when the Catholic Bishops' Conference had a different position from that of the Pope, when... They didn't uh, have, no, no, so you throwing two things together. I'm putting two things together. <laughs> yeah, you okay, it, shed some it, light on yeah, that. No, so the, 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 bishop, the Bishop of Ghana did not disagree with the Pope. The, what the bishops of Ghana uh, uh, you know, uh, exp were expressing is that a document, a document uh, is supposed to uh, uh, came from one office okay, of the Vatican in charge of discipline of uh, faith and all of that. And that office, that uh, document suggested a possible blessing of gay couples. Okay? That's, when, that's when the bishops were saying, if you bless a couple, it's tantamount to recognizing their marriage. And if you recognize their marriage, then you also recognizing their sexual relations and all of that. So you basically condoning uh, homosexuality. That was a protest. But, okay, and this is a big but. But, so the documents that came from out there, the guy realized that it didn't do enough consultation and whatever type of thing about, about this document. And so began to do some more. With it. And now they ended the so the thing Pope was saying that he's for blessing of persons, not the blessing of couples. Mm. Okay, so and it, so you know you may be in relation with anybody, but if you come, if you came to me alone, asked to be blessed, I have no problem. I, I should not have a problem blessing you. Right. If you came as a couple, ask me to bless, then that blessing entails, okay, blessing a union. And a union of two, as what? I know, again, for, for, for the sake of this interview, I know cases where two men live together without intending to marry. They say they live together for company. Okay, so they will not go and ask for marriage. Mm -hmm. I also know a married man who lives with a wife, both of them are married, and they say, we've decided not to have sex. So you have these variations. Therefore, I mean, if two men came and they say we're living together for company, because what becomes objectionable for the church and other right. faith is, is their sexual whatever type of thing. Indeed. That is where... So, so your eminence, because you've spoken about this before, I want to create the opportunity for you to clarify a lot of things. Okay. Um, you told the BBC yes. that if this did not have a place, I mean, that was the argument that you made, uh, you know, there is an expression in Ghanaian languages like a kan, mm -hmm. where men who act like women and women who Babies, act like yeah. men, indeed. And you argued that this was an indication that homosexuality was not an imposition from outside of our concept. Um, and if culturally we had the expressions, it means that it's not completely alien. The phenomenon the is not completely alien. And indeed, that's the case. The phenomenon, as I express it, 
which is uh, referred to traditionally as Beyin it's, 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 it's the way people are. And you cannot, you cannot have a problem with that. Okay, so that phenomenon of Beyin I didn't coin that expression. It means in the society, people are seeing that this is a man, but he has like a woman or mm -hmm. whatever type mm -hmm. of thing. It's a phenomenon. People can display that phenomenon without any, any issue. So those, I'm saying, should not be criminalized. That's what the other part of the argument Indeed. of BBC. Should not be criminalized. You criminalize them for what? For, for just being what they are? Mm. You criminal only acts, things that people have done which you find reprehensible. If people like that, in the case of the law in Ghana, go and find another man or whatever type of thing, begin to, that's when, that's when the thing about the act can be found, be found to be reprehensible and can uh, but, but, face but, but our law will criminalize uh, Just being not only phenomenon. the act, but also, you know, if you dress I'm not, I'm not, up I'm, like... I'm, I'm not sure the law criminalizes people for being based for just being being based here. Oh, it, it does. It, it talks no. about people who cross-dress as well. Or you're being in base, yeah? or she maybe put on a skirt or something. And, and so, such a person is put into prison. You, you, it's criminalized, yes. Oh, well, I, I'm, okay, so. Uh, Are you, I, you're I'm surprised not, by that? No, no, yes, I'm surprised that because that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a feeling, I mean, who controls how one is born? And if one is born this way, why does it in itself constitute a crime? My criminality, crim, criminal, crime, crime is based on acts. Something that you are accountable, whatever. Mm -hmm. If there's no act that makes somebody, you know, that an act irreprehensible, well, the, if that's what I am, I, I'm born. And, and the other part of that is your admi admonition to developed countries who are beginning to impose. use, indeed. And, I, you know, I want you to address that well, because, again, in the case of Ghana, the argument for pro um, homosexuality advocates is is the fear that Ghana would now become a, a state that is not able to access uh, development funds, perhaps. Sure, that, that, this is this again. This again, uh, putting pressure. I mean, this this, this happens only when a, a country is poor, and and like uh, sometimes uh, some aspects of our budget is financed from you know some said donations and good whatever. Issue with this type of issue issue with this is uh, that. Sometimes the, those who argue, argue from the point of view of rights, okay, that people have rights to become this and they have rights to yeah. become whatever, they have rights to become whatever. You have a right to become everything, but every right is also goes with responsibility. And, and then that's where you determine, does the society have a role in determining the, the living of rights and its corresponding responsibility or not? Mm. Okay, so, so this, is, this is something that needs to be recognized. But the thing about European, European feeling, whatever type of thing, I mean, what Europeans feel should not become a law for how Ghanaians should feel. That, 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 that's, that, that should not be the case. What we feel never becomes a law for them. In this case, they, they, they talk as if we can because they are in the position to impose. You know, Indeed. grants, you need money, whatever. Therefore, you don't do it. They say, well, what? Neocolonialism. Your, your right? Eminence, the Catholic Church has engaged in more infrastructure across the world than any other church organization. Yeah. Uh, in this country, we have put a lot, lot of resources mm -hmm. into building a national cathedral. Is there justification for that? Carriage, what? A national cathedral in this country. Is there it's justification? It's not the carriage that No, no, right? not, I'm, no, I'm saying, <laughs> no, let me clarify that. <laughs> I'm saying that your, the Catholic Church as an organization yeah. has, you know, put in resources into infrastructure all over the world. Yeah. A country like Ghana, mm -hmm. perhaps that in, doesn't have the kind of resources that the Vatican does uh, have, is putting resources <laughs> in the National Cathedral. The, is there justification for that? The resources of the Vatican, uh, it's, it's a wrong thing to refer to in this case because a lot of people think that the church wallows in money. Mm. It's not true. I live there. We have to cut our budget. When I present the budget of the academy last year, I had to cut it by 200,000, okay, to be approved. So, you know, we, 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 we also tight. Okay, we tight and, and bishops will tell you that the type of help they used to get from the Vatican to do a lot of things, is also on the decline. So that one is an aside. But your question about the... Whether there's justification for the National Cathedral. To be built? To be built. 
No, so it, it, was, it was the president's decision to, to do this. And again, if, if, if my information is right, and I stand to correction in this, uh, it appears as if this was meant to be a votive offering. Votive offering is something that you offer to God in, in, in gratitude for, for something that you believe he has granted you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if that is the sense. Indeed, okay? that's what he said. Okay, if that is the sense, then it was a votive offering. A, 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 an offering, a free will offering from your side in gratitude to God for the victory. Okay, then it's a president's personal initiative. It's not a Ghana national initiative. It's a president national, a personal, personal initiative. If subsequently he managed to sell the idea and make the personal initiative become whatever national, that's something he could do or he could have done. But otherwise, this was a votive offering, which uh, examples of which exist several in places in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You go to uh, pilgrimage sites and you see a lot of donations that people, you know, gifts that people leave there. Right. So you become a president and you want to say thank you to God for having made you a president. It and you say be. out of this, I want to dedicate a, a cathedral to you. It should Fine. be personal. Then, then it's, a, it's a votive offering. I mean, so this is the thing. If I look at that thing as a votive offering, then that's what it is. If, however, it's not a votive offering, then I probably need to be educated about what a it bit is. More. Because I know that he created a board. Mm. The Bishop, I Bishop of Cape Buckle is on the board with a few other whatever mm -hmm. on the board. So, uh, what is it? So, you know, so the, the, the nature becomes whatever that probably needs, you know, I need well. to educate myself about. Please share your, that's your camera, share your peace message as we head into the elections with the Ghanaian people. So basically, I think what has brought us here, which is initiated and began this conversation, is the prospect of elections ahead of us. And, and, and my biggest thing is that I would want to take this one step higher. One step higher means look at the leaders. And I like to, I like to, I like to exhort encourage, appeal with the leaders from the experience that they've had. Not, be, you know, not because I want to make them Catholics, but the experience they had with you know, Pope Francis to make some of his values and whatever, you know, sh you know uh, be made manifest in whatever type of thing. And in that sense, may the desire for peace of Pope Francis, which makes him kiss the feet of warring parties and all of that, should be with them so that these leaders can control their supporters and masses and have them bring peace. Mm. And, 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 and for me, if these leaders cannot exercise leadership on that level, then I wonder what kind of leadership can be exercised on a national level. Very well. So it's a challenge and an appeal that I make in the interest of peace, whatever, make your pilgrimages to the Vatican and your conversation with the peace, you know, impact your own attitude and your own openness to embracing peace and having your constituencies and all people you represent and control also embrace the part of peace.